Hello and welcome to a Tuesday night. A very busy and hostile Tuesday night. For Tuesday night, London is crazy. I buzzed my Oyster card at the barriers, the train station, but the guy in front didn't get out the way quick enough as he was going through. So the barrier shot on my hand and it really hurt. <laughs> Uh, and then a guy just pushed this woman down the stairs next to me. It's honestly, it's crazy. But look how pretty where I work is. Look how gorgeous that is. I have not eaten since about 11 o'clock. It is now, I think it's literally just gone five. Two minutes past five. So I'm going to nip into Leon across the road, which is literally opposite the Sondheim, which is next door to the Gilgood, which is where we will be from December. And I'm not sponsored by them. They're just close and good. Gilgood, Sondheim, Leon, yeah. Hashtag nom on Etsy, Cat and Mike, for sending us these brownies and flapjacks. Oh my goodness. So good. <coughs> Shan, you have become the star of my vlog. Yeah, you anti back those hands. It's flea season, guys. It is, and everyone's got it. Welcome to the stage. We're gonna see all the outfits. All the outfits? All the outfits? All the outfits. Oh, like the, the, ca the cast outfits. The stylish cast. <laughs> Mr. All the lamest t-shirts. Hello, Mr. Ball. Hello, Mr. Hello. Lucas. I want to see your t-shirt. Show us your t-shirt. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Looks really good, Chris. <laughs> Still Halloween back here? Oh, yeah. Where's the Matt Lucas that's now on his head? <laughs> With a Henry, that's Henry from Sound. For some reason, it's Henry Mus, and he's everywhere. And there's Joe behind. Joe, Joe, why is Henry everywhere? Henmus. It's Henmus. Why? There was nothing in between Halloween and Christmas from closing Christmas, so it's been invented. Okay, so it's Henmus. Beautiful. Come on, let's go up here. I never get to come up here. This is where all the orchestra sit. It's Katie, Kerr, and Holly, and Hall, and Sean, and Sean. Did somebody say just eat? Did somebody say just eat? Join in, everybody. You know how it goes. Okay. I am happy. I am healthy. I am loved. I am successful. Are you really? I am happy. I am healthy, I am loved, I am successful. One more time. I am happy, I am healthy, I am loved, I am successful. Go forth and conquer, go forth and smash it. Go forth and slay. Go forth and do. Go forth and take your notes. That's right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Katie Don't mess this up. Don't mess this up. Don't be Oh, uh, Holly, can you be quiet, please? Sorry. It says quiet, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God, it's Craig Mather. Oh my God. This man I never see oh, at any no. point during the show oh, ever. I am filming. Oh, what's it for? Oh. <laughs> got that on camera. Literally yes. got that on camera. You're gonna make world wide news. That's a really nice dance. This is Kieran Joyce, by the way. He was in Dubai with me. Well, me and the audience go mental and you go, that's my cue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm different from this house. I mean, you've been dying to bring that up for so long, haven't you? Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh god, is that a camera? That was a bit loud and there's a show going on upstairs. Mm, it's only healthy, no pain, no gain. Oh, it's so funny because we make ourselves mad. We make ourselves 
Blair because we had a couple of tequilas before the show. She's not supposed to say that out loud. Oh, well. Uncle Cameron, if you hear Mocktails, I believe. Mocktails is what I meant to say. <laughs> anyway, I had an explosive nosebleed upstairs and I need to go attend to my wound. <laughs> it's a stress bleed, you call it. Do you think that's an improvisation? It's not. I did act on that. You was at home. That actually happened. <laughs> I know, even goddess actors like that. I'm gonna myself. lay down a little wet rag on his head. Come on. Right, go, you've got cues. Well, I'm gonna do it now tonight. I'm not here tomorrow. Damn it! Looks like it's gonna be closing soon. I'm really hoping that it's not, because I need milk for tea. <laughs> Sir, did you just flash me? I don't even know you. Stranger danger. <laughs> Over here we have May the Moments with Craig Maver. Yeah, May the Moments. And then over here we have me at Barricade Books. Then up here we have Jo Loxon and her Christmas cards. Pretty, pretty Christmas cards. And over here we have Maddie and her Christmas bunting. Oh my god! And then we have Katie Kerr's peanut butter cups down here. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful work. And then over here, we have Andrew York and his beautiful... <laughs> oh, as if you could ever be camera shy. <laughs> Look at this calligraphy though, I can't deal with it. Still definitely my favourite. <laughs> definitely my favourite. Got one sleigh more. Yule still answer to Javert. Reindeer will make the flowers grow. And then down here, we have Sophie Reeves with her amazing Reeves. Reeves, Reeves! Oh! Mate, nailed it. Reeves, Reeves. And then down here we have Ollie Brennan and his chutney. Oh, and Slimson down here. Yes, music is the answer. And there he is, the man himself. <gasps> Well, hello and welcome to my new bathroom in my new house, which also sort of looks like the Ministry of Magic from Harry Potter. <laughs> I've just come home from my show and I'm not feeling 100%, so I'm having a little self-care bath. I've got a big standalone bathtub with like claw feet on the bottom. But that was like one of my criteria. My bathroom has to be big enough to fit a standalone 
bathtub because that is something, for some reason, that's something I've wanted since I was a kid. It, I think it must be in a film or several films I saw growing up. And that has just embedded itself in my brain as the ideal bathtub to have. So Oliver and I have officially moved into the house now. Um, there's still lots of bits and pieces to be done, but for the most part, the house is done. And I guess something that was also really important for me about having a bathroom, I love a bath, I love to have a bubble bath, and I love a nighttime skincare routine, I love a daytime skincare routine before I put my makeup on. So something that was really important for me about the bathroom was to have the ideal place to feel relaxed and to have the space to indulge myself in self-care when the time came. And now, as you may have noticed, this video is sponsored yet again by the wonderful Naughty Hair Care, um, who I did a video collaboration with a few months ago now, back at, when I was at Tom's house. They have this to the rescue hair mask. Now, I love a long bath. And if I'm gonna have a long bath, that usually comes with either a face mask or a hair mask, or both. Occasionally it's both. Today it is the To The Rescue Hair Care. I use my own hair, or part of my own hair, when I'm Fontaine. I've got like half a wig, it starts there, and then it's like long curly hair. So the front of my hair is used and the rest of it's all pinned up. And when you're using your own hair for a show, or even when you're not actually, when you have your hair pin curled up under a wig, your hair sort of just goes through it a bit. It takes its toll on your hair, so having really good hair care products or hair masks are uh, the one, like a real intensive treatment for your hair. It's really important for me personally to do one at least, at least once a week. But this one smells like something that I can't put my finger on. It smells a bit like marzipan, maybe that's what, maybe it's like a good old Pattenberg. The thing I love about Naughty Hair Care is that it's vegan and cruelty free kind of ticks all the boxes. And the best thing to do is to pair it up with Naughty's own products, because obviously they all complement each other. So I'm using the Wave Hello Curl Defining Shampoo. I gave the hair a wash, and then I took a very generous helping, <laughs> a very generous helping of the hair mask. I just slathered my hair in it. Now usually you keep it on for three to five minutes and then rinse it off, but if you want an intensive treatment, you leave it on for 20, a whole 20 minutes. So I am using the timer on my um, camera. It's telling me that it has been seven minutes so far. If you don't follow Scarred Not Scared on Twitter or Instagram, her real name is Michelle Elman, you really should because she's amazing. And recently she posted something about how this culture we've sort of created about constantly being productive and burning out and you're not performing to the best of your potential if you aren't exhausted all of the time and you're not completely burnt out. And as soon as you prioritise self-care or say, do you know what, actually I'm going to have a bubble bath uh, or I'm just going to take some time for myself, people start calling you lazy. <laughs> so we have created this really weird warped culture where if you're not up at 6am and home after midnight working your ass off and if you aren't exhausted to the point of burning out then you're lazy and you aren't performing to the best of your capabilities and you're not doing enough with your life. It's just such a weird idea if you're not working yourself into the ground and you're not making yourself sick by overworking and being productive every second of the day then you're worthless and you're lazy. So I am making a point in this video that you should all take 10 minutes, take half an hour, take a, take a day if you want to take a day. Take a day to do nothing. What is it in Eat, Pray, Love? Dolce Far Niente, is that what it's called? I might have made that up, but it's the phrase that means the sweetness of doing nothing. You don't have to be busy every second of every day in order to prove your worth. You are allowed downtime. You are allowed to sit and read a book. You're allowed to take 20 minutes to do a hair mask in your bathtub. It's time to take the hair mask off. And there 
we go. God, my hair is long now. That's a look. That's a real look, that. My hair has a lovely time once it's been washed and then it settles down after about an hour or so. So I'm gonna let it do its thing whilst I'm sleeping and it will have chilled out by tomorrow, but it seems to love naughty hair care. <laughs> and there we have it. Hello, I am up at the butt crack of dawn on a Sunday because Michael Ball is holding a children in need charity event today. He's doing his radio show which starts at 11, I think, and the entire cast of uh, Les Mis are singing One Day More. However, I will not be there because I am singing at the charity lunch, which is straight after the meal and I'm opening the show. So my sound check is at 11.30. <clears throat> And I'm singing Just Keep Moving the Line from Smash, which was on my album, and I have my backing track from my album. Um, and I've not sung it in ages, so I'm looking forward to singing it, but there's no repeating lyrics in this song. And for someone who is a professional singer, you will know how terrifying that is. Because you can never go, oh, well, this is the chorus. I know this bit because this is the same as the last chorus, and it will be the same as the next chorus. This song has no chorus. It's just all repeating lyrics. So I am pooing myself a little bit but it's just the one song and once that song is over I've been invited to stay for the lunch but I think I'm just gonna come home and have part of my day off I was gonna go and try and catch High Fidelity but I'm singing at 10 past 2 and High Fidelity starts at 3 so the chances I'll make that are slim I'll see what time I, I'll see what time I finish I'll see what time I leave the Savoy Hotel Look how long my hair is getting. I don't think I like it. I need coffee so bad. And my voice is so tired. Oh God, what's gonna happen today? Um, can we also just appreciate, it is currently, hang on. It is 9.38 in the morning. Oh, there's a picture of me and Ollie kissing. It's 9.38 in the morning. And I got out of bed at nine. Considering I am showered, hair washed, makeup quite well done and my bag full of crap is down there to take today, considering I did that all in less than 38 minutes. That's impressive, right? That's some kind of like record, I'd say. Here we are on the way into the Savoy Theatre. did amazingly on stage. I was in the wings filming it all and now everyone has been seated in the main ballroom and I'm gonna sing. I don't think I'll get a chance to film it because I don't really want to ask anyone to film it. It's also the pressure of me filming it. <laughs> it it's one thing to perform for an audience whose memories will fade but having it captured on camera for the rest of time is a lot of pressure. I'm a bit nervous about that so I don't think I'll film it but I'm singing Just Keep Moving the Line from Smash. It's my album version so I know it, I'm just, my brain keeps going, you don't know the lyrics. Of course you don't know the lyrics. Um, I'm wearing a lovely Lindy Bop dress, which was kindly gifted to me. This is my own belt from Primark. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lovely little number. Thank you, Lindy Bop, for that. And then I don't know if I'm gonna try and make Ollie's show afterwards, or if I'm gonna go and run some errands and go home and just have a bit of a rest. I'm still undecided, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so this is the deal. I just sang the song and it was all fine up until the last note when my voice really wobbled because I was just so nervous and I think I saw the finish line and was like, just, just get through it, get through it, get through it. And I am so embarrassed. I've Rob recorded it and listened to it and it doesn't sound that bad, but you know that horrible embarrassment when you feel like you've really screwed up and you sounded like an idiot. Well, I've got that. So uh, I'll play you the beginning of the song <laughs> and not the end of it because the beginning of it sounded fine because that's all like low and lush and whatever.
places, but they just keep moving But anyway, I've got a cab on the way to take me to the Turbine Theatre because I'm going to try and see Ollie's show. It's 22 minutes past two and their show starts at three. Wish me luck trying to make that. <laughs> Oh, it looks so pretty. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Been up there. That's awesome. So I can tell you, at the top of those um, chimneys, there's going to be a bar up there. And Shut think, up. Yeah. That's so awesome. There's going to be 30, I think about 30 people could be up there at one time. And you'll go and just chill out up there. Um, <clears throat> in the middle of it, there's um, an apple store, which they bought the um, like a big section of the Battersea power station. Right. In between the Battersea power station, you can put St Paul's Cathedral in it. Um, and also, because there's so much, um, um, what do you call it? There's so much. Stop it. There's so much scaffolding in mm. in that building yeah. whilst they're doing mm. it. Um, there was a scaffolding shortage in London uh, mm. because of that one project, and they are spending uh, one million pound a day. Um, on the project, it's uh, a 2.2 uh, billion pound project um, from Malaysian investors. Um, so, and they think this the, this is grade three of the project, and it's grade five. So, they're going to uh, grade four. I think is going to be the high street, which is going to be um, s south of this building, and then they're going to be a it's going to be a tube station, a number one, uh, uh, a zone one power. Uh, no, a zone one uh, tube station, Battersea Power Station. Um, what else do I know about it? I think that, that's good. That's, that was a, a good summary. Good roundup. Yeah. But we're getting on the boat now.